So you may think <laughs> I'm completely foolish for having cameras in my coop and run, but I'm gonna tell you, I can't believe how helpful they've been and how they came in super helpful during a critical situation with Lil and probably saved her life. Hey y'all, it's Renee, and welcome back to Tater Town. Lil, you too? As a scientist, data and documentation drive pretty much everything I do. So having those cameras gives me so much insight to what's going on around here, and they've definitely saved my yes! many times. Can I say that? Can I say that, Bryson? I have them everywhere, so I can monitor all the animals and property, and it has definitely come in handy, not just for giving me peace of mind, but also for figuring out issues like, okay, where along the fence line do the donkeys get out? Or there's a mouse in the hen house. Beginning of December, I happened to do one of my regular head counts at roosting time via camera. Um, and what I noticed is what appeared to be poop on Lil's vent feathers. Uh, it was fairly soon after they went to roost, so I decided to go out and clean it off so that um, it wouldn't be stuck on her feathers all night long. Um, but as soon as I got out there, I noticed that it wasn't poop, it was an eggshell. And the first thought that ran through my head was she have a prolapsed vent. Uh, before I could look back at the footage, I immediately brought her inside and cleaned her up in my isol and put her in the isolation isolation cage that I have set up um, so I could give her some electrolytes and extra calcium and also that I could monitor her and I was really worried because part of that eggshell was still stuck to her vent and I wasn't able to remove it even though it had only been like maybe 45 minutes it was really stuck um, so I lubricated her vent area and I was really hoping that it would work loose now that I had the time, I looked back at the video footage and I realized that she'd laid a soft shell egg while she was roosting. Um, like I said, it had only been about 45 minutes from the time that that egg exploded as she passed it to the time I did the head count and saw that she had something stuck to her vent feathers. So I was very, very thankful that I caught it that quickly and also thankful that her butt was right in front of the camera because had it not been there, I probably wouldn't have seen it, um, which also made me think I should probably get some more cameras, but I digress. Anyway, the next morning, she was bright and alert and happy to hang with me in the house all day. Her vent looked good. It was, you know, just slightly pink, no, not red, or it didn't look prolapsed, but her crop was large and super hard. I mean, baseball sized and hard like a baseball too, which again, I was surprised because she hadn't eaten anything overnight and you know, they're supposed to go down, you know, overnight, they're supposed to digest all their food and it, you know, goes back to normal size by the morning. Um, so I spent the day continuing to monitor her, massaging her crop, giving her coconut oil. Uh, she was pooping as usual. It looked completely normal, but her crop wasn't going down. The next morning, her crop was still large and hard. And I'm thinking, what is going on? She laid a soft shelled egg that broke as it was exiting. So I was worried about uh, the potential for eggshell peritonitis infection. Um, she has a crop that's not emptying, but she's acting completely normal. And I'm thinking she's just eaten a ton of everyone else's feathers since they were molting and she maybe she can't digest them and maybe it affected her ability to absorb calcium, which led to the soft shell egg. I don't know, who knows? And that's how my brain thinks. So I'm going through every possible scenario. Anyway, moving forward, I called my vet and I dropped her off since she had to be worked into his schedule. And the whole time I'm thinking they're gonna have to remove whatever is in her crop because it's just not going anywhere. Hang tight. This is about you. You should be up here, right? So here's my little Lil. You're such a sweetheart. You should... I was thinking that they were going to have to surgically remove whatever was in her crop because if it keeps going on like this, 
her crop is going to get stretched and it's going to keep stretching, which leads to other issues down the road, or she's going to starve to death. So I was, you know, I know it's a lot of people say it's a chicken um, and they do provide me eggs, but they are still, you know, well taken care of. And I, I do find that to be very, you know, I enjoy taking care of them because they do give me lots of love. Anyway, a few hours later, the vet called and he said that overall, she looks healthy and energetic. She was eating and pooping normal. Hi. And he wasn't really concerned about her laying the soft shelled eggs since it was winter and they usually taper off anyway. He was concerned about her crop, but he really didn't want to do surgery since it can be very hard on birds. Now I'm not going to lie. I wasn't really thrilled about the prospect of surgery since it can be costly, but I also just wanted her to be better as soon as possible. And I was afraid of, you know, if it kept going on like this, what the, the side effects could be, the long-term side effects. Well, his recommendation was to keep doing what I was already doing, uh, massaging her crop. We did that like every hour. Uh, we fed her mostly moist food and coconut oil. And since I ferment her feed, you know, that feed is already moist. And wouldn't you know, our crop was completely empty by that third morning. I was so relieved and also really still baffled by the whole situation, but really glad we did not have to do surgery because I was convinced that that was gonna be the only outcome. Anyway, uh, I let her back out with the flock the next day, I kept her in for one more day, and it was as if nothing happened. And then a few days later, um, she started a hard molt and I mean I went out in the morning and she looked like a total disaster she's still and of course this is you know this is mid mid December and it's starting we're starting to get really really cold weather uh, we were getting into the negatives and I'm thinking great she's almost bare skin well a few days later I noticed her sister, Annie, started a, whole, a hard molt. So, okay, great. Now, all of these first year chicks um, that are maybe, so February, March, April, May, June, July, August, they're 10 months old and they're all molting. Fast forward again to December 24th and another Golden Comet, Margaret, she was exhibiting the same crop issue that Lil did. So hard crop, hers was actually bigger, uh, maybe not as solid and hard as Lil's was, but it was significantly bigger and still hard. So I brought her inside and repeated the same treatment. Again, it took several days, but unlike Lil, she had diarrhea. And I mean, the whole time and it was messy and gross and everywhere. But again, in about two or three days, her crop was completely empty and she was fine. And then she started to molt. I have no idea what's going on here. I'm super thankful that Lil and Margaret did not need to have crop surgery and that my vet was confident that the crop would eventually empty with conservative treatment. Um, I haven't talked with him yet about the scenario, everything that happened with all the chickens, but I, I do plan on it and I'll keep you posted by what he says. And I'm very much aware that all the symptoms may have nothing to do with each other, but it really does seem suspect to me. You know, hard crop, not digesting, and then all of a sudden, once it empties, they go into a hard molt. Who knows, maybe. But I do wonder, have any of you had a similar experience with crop stasis and molting? Or even if you have chickens the first year that were born early in the year, did they molt? Anyway, if you've had any of this scenario happen to you, um, please drop me a line in the comments. Um, I'm really interested if it's a thing or if they're just totally unrelated. And thanks again for taking the time to join me here on Tater Town. Right, Lou? <laughs>